Hola, buenas. Today we are going to be talking about the best cities to live in Spain and why. Each place has their positives and negatives, so this video today is for you to make an informed decision about your potential next move. Having lived in Spain for almost six years now, I want to give my two cents on this matter. Spain is known for its vibrant culture, beautiful landscapes, and rich history, making it a fantastic place to live, but it's also a very diverse place. The first thing to mention that a lot of people who do not live in Spain may not realize is that Spain is made up of autonomous regions. What does that mean? Well, it means each region of Spain governs themselves. Some regions have more autonomy than others, such as Catalonia, Basque Country, or Navarre. This can make a big impact on how the region runs and therefore may have an influence on the decision of where to live. As an example, in Catalonia, it is mandated that all public administration and education must be conducted in Catalan. This includes legal documents and educational instructions, which means that proficiency in Catalan is essential for many public sector jobs and educational institutions. So if you're looking for work or have kids that may need to catch up at school, be aware of this. Many people, however, live in Barcelona, the capital city of Catalonia, and only speak Castellano, or as we know it in English, as simply Spanish. So don't be completely deterred by this option. In Andalusia, in the south, depending on the history of the buildings you are living in, you may be subject to strict guidelines on how properties can be painted or renovated to maintain architectural integrity. Another consideration if you are eyeing up Andalusia. Don't forget to consider the following. Cost of living. Major cities like Barcelona and Madrid tend to be more expensive, while smaller cities like Granada and Alicante can be more affordable. Climate. Spain offers a range of climates from Mediterranean warmth of the coast to the cooler, wetter conditions of the north. You might have a preference of what you prefer. However, for me personally, if I was to live in the north, I might as well be living in England. Not that there's anything wrong with the north of Spain at all. In fact, it is not only one of the most beautiful places, but it can be quite affordable and some of the best food. In addition, I'm a bit weird and I enjoy the extreme heat. Some people love that it's a lot cooler in the north. Job market. Larger cities generally offer more diverse job opportunities. Unless you are working remotely, this is definitely something to consider and was the driving force behind why I ended up living in Madrid. And finally, lifestyle. Whether you prefer urban bustle, cultural experiences, or a more relaxed beach lifestyle can greatly influence your choice. Each place offers its own unique charm, so the best place for you will depend on your lifestyle preferences and needs. Without any further ado, let's jump into this list starting with Bilbao. The positives are that Bilbao city is clean, green, and surrounded by beautiful landscapes, and it offers a unique blend of modern and traditional Basque culture, known for the Guggenheim Museum and its innovative architecture. The negatives are that the weather can be rainy and overcast, so don't expect stereotypical sunny weather you would usually expect from Spain. In addition, the local language is predominantly Basque, which may pose a challenge when you first moved here. Then again, when I first moved to Madrid, I didn't know any Castellano. So really, this is something you can learn with time. Next on our list, we have San Sebastian, which is known for its stunning beaches, world-class gastronomy, and picturesque surroundings. It's a favorite for foodies and those who enjoy a more relaxed coastal lifestyle. Once again, it's situated in the north of Spain, meaning you are contending with the cooler weather and potentially a lot of rainy days. Again, this is subjective, and I put this in the negative, but maybe for you, this is a positive. Don't let me tell you how to live your life. The cost of living is also relatively high and the city can be quite small when compared with other places in Spain, which limits job opportunities and activities for some people. Then again, if you're looking for a slower pace of life, maybe this could work in your favor. Coming in after San Sebastian, we have Barcelona, renowned for its stunning architecture, especially Gaudi's masterpieces like the Sagrada Familia and Park Güell. The city has a lively cultural scene, excellent food, and beautiful beaches. The cons are that not only is it quite expensive, but that money has drawn a lot of petty criminals. I'm not joking, Barcelona is nearly synonymous with petty crime, and it only seems to be getting worse. Not to mention, I have also heard violent crimes are on the rise, and let's not forget, Barcelona is the place where those nasty locals thought it would be an appropriate thing to squirt water guns at holidaymakers. 
whilst they were sitting there enjoying their food in a restaurant. Again, I empathize with the locals, but that isn't the appropriate reaction to an overpopulation and housing crisis issue. That being said, the tourist influx can also lead to crowded streets and high living costs. I've been pretty brutal on this one due to recent events, but I just want to make sure I'm giving you all the information. And to all my friends that are from Barcelona, I love you. <laughs> Toledo is up next, famous for its well-preserved medieval architecture and rich history. It offers a unique cultural experience with a low cost of living compared to larger Spanish cities. And it's also in close proximity to the capital city of Madrid, meaning you can technically live in Toledo and commute to Madrid if you need to go there for work. The downside is that Toledo itself is a small city, so job opportunities specifically there and modern amenities are limited. Moving on now to Granada. Another, housing the famous Alhambra, a palace and fortress in addition to its charming old neighborhoods. It offers a low cost of living compared to larger cities and has a relaxed student-friendly atmosphere thanks to its university. Once again, the downside here is that the job market may be a little bit small and living in a historic area means dealing with older infrastructure, which means higher maintenance costs, potential disruptions to utilities and services and a lack of modern conveniences like high-speed internet, efficient heating and cooling systems, and reliable public transportation. We will now proceed with Alicante, which has a pleasant Mediterranean climate, beautiful beaches, and a vibrant local culture. It also offers a more affordable cost of living compared to other coastal cities. It is, however, smaller than cities like Valencia and Barcelona, which might limit the certain amenities and job opportunities. We cannot have a list of this nature without mentioning Madrid. This is where I currently live, and it must be said, this is the one I can speak the most about. It is the capital with a vibrant cultural scene, and as a result of influence from not only the other autonomous regions, but from overseas too, with world class museums like the Prado and the Reina Sofia, the city offers a rich array of dining options, shopping and nightlife. I cannot express enough how incredible the food options are in this city and the quality of it too. Because the competition is so high, the quality is so high. It's also well connected with the rest of the country as a result of being dead in the middle, making travel to other parts of Spain and Europe easy. It's not like the UK where taking a train for one hour costs as much as a a small island over in the UK you might need to literally remortgage your house just to buy a ticket <laughs> I have actually got the ticket from Madrid to Valencia for eight euros which is the equivalent of going from say London to Manchester which as far as I remember is something like a hundred quid onto the negatives of Madrid now and this is totally personal but you feel isolated as a result of being landlocked I think this might just be me but even when I lived in London I didn't feel so far away from the coast the the river that runs through Madrid is the Rio Manzanares, which is very small in comparison to many other rivers in Spain. In addition, summer can be scorching, and I'm pretty sure that Madrid is somehow midway between the sun and the earth. Physics says otherwise, but that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> and housing prices have been rising steadily. And finally, the pace of life is also fast. I'm not sure why I'm putting this in the negatives because quite frankly, I like that. But for many other people, it could be a bit too intense. Next, we have Malaga, which I had the pleasure of living in for six months. And to be completely honest with you, I really miss it. It's an actual paradise in my opinion. It is located on the Costa del Sol with a lovely warm climate. I used to go for a run parallel to the beach once a week. Even during the winter months, it was still hot enough and the sun appeared to always be out. Wearing shorts and a t-shirt is totally sufficient. The beaches are simply beautiful and it has a thriving cultural scene with a number of museums and galleries. Also, it is where Pablo Picasso was born. So that's pretty cool. It's also becoming increasingly popular among expats or whatever non-offensive term you want to use there. I don't know. Well, I'm sure there's going to be someone in the comments telling me, ah, you can't say expats. No, no, no. Like the negatives are that the job market can be competitive and the city can be tourist heavy during the peak seasons. Also, finding a affordable flat in the summer is almost impossible as a result of short term lets. I personally found that because the population size is quite small, I would often bump into the same people every day. I met some amazingly incredible people living in Malaga and I love you all, but I felt like I was in a village even though I was in a city. The big question is, would I move back there? Oh my God, yes. Take me back there right now. <laughs>
We're quickly moving on now, next is Seville, or as they say in Spain, Sevilla, which is the capital of Andalusia, my personal favorite region of Spain, which also includes Malaga, of course. Sevilla is famous for its historic sites, including the Alcazar and the Seville Cathedral. The city offers a rich cultural experience with flamenco music, tapas bars, and lively festivals. The cost of living is relatively low too. Remember how before I said that in Madrid, it was toasty in the summer? Well, scrap that. Sevilla is the hottest place on earth. <laughs> in fact, Sevilla is Spanish for that's a spicy meatball. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not that, but but it might as well be, okay? I've been to Sevilla multiple times now and can tell you it's absolutely brutal, even as someone who absolutely loves the heat. Also, I want to take this moment to say, if you even plan to visit Sevilla, please promise me one thing. Don't use the horse carriages when you visit. The way those idiots abuse those poor animals is absolutely vile, and that's coming from someone who doesn't even like horses. And number one goes to Valencia. Whee, Valencia, whee. For those watching who know me, you knew this one was coming, but let me tell you why. In my opinion, it is the best. Valencia has a very pleasant climate, beautiful beaches, and has the most unique and beautiful buildings, and it even has the City of Arts and Sciences, which is an architectural and cultural complex, which is one of the most striking modern attractions in the country. It also has a lower cost of living compared to Barcelona and Madrid, but is still well coordinated to Madrid, as mentioned before. It is smaller than Madrid, making it easier to get around, very flat, making it even more viable to have a bike, or simply rent the bikes found in the city. And the company for renting bikes is called Balen Bici, just in case you're looking for that when you go there. On to the negatives now, it's not as internationally known as Madrid or Barcelona, which might impact job opportunities in certain fields. And that's it. That's the only negative. And that is my list for the top best cities to live in Spain. Let me know what you think of my list, which you agree with, which you don't agree with. Let me know your thoughts, but not your feelings. I don't wanna know your feelings. <laughs> in the comments section and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.